Hey, it's Christina here, Keto Boss Babe, and today I want to talk to you about keto sweeteners and how to incorporate them into your keto or low carb lifestyle. So we have some low carb or paleo sweeteners, and then we have some keto ones that we'll talk about as well. So if you're like me, you probably love maybe cookies or cake or muffins before you went keto. Um, I was definitely a big carb lover. And so part of my keto lifestyle is to include some of these sweets or muffins um, occasionally when I want them. So this is how I do it. So here are some of the different sweeteners that I like to use. The first one that I like to use are the Swerve sweeteners. Um, these ones are really good. They're one of the most popular ones out there. And part of the reason is because um, they have a granulated version, they have a powdered version, and they just came out with a brown sugar Swerve. Um, super cool. So the nice thing with Swerve is it is a one-to-one -one replacement. Um, so if you're baking something, you just take out whatever white cane sugar that you had in there and then use the granulated or powdered instead. So some things to think about with the Swerve, um, that is zero carbs, so zero net carbs because it is sugar alcohols. Um, there are, we tend to bake with the powdered more often than the granulated. It's really something that's kind of your personal choice. Um, there is this cooling effect aftertaste that some people experience. Um, and I'm one of them, I'm a little bit picky about my sweeteners, but I still love to use Swerve. And what I do is I tend to use the powdered more, and then I will add in, what we'll talk about next, I add in some liquid stevia. And the combination of the two is absolutely perfect. So Swerve, one of the most common ones out there, I get them on Amazon, um, I'll have the link below, um, but one of the most common sweeteners for keto out there. So the next keto sweetener I want to talk about is liquid stevia. And we absolutely love our liquid stevia. It works great in baking. Um, stevia is a sugar alcohol as well. It's a natural sweetener um, from a plant, the stevia leaf. And the brand we have here is Sweet Leaf Sweet Drops. Um, it's just one of the brands that I've, I've liked. It's at our local grocery store, which is nice. Um, you can get a lot of the at your local grocery stores in the health food section or just like this one, I get them on Amazon all the time too. It's great to have it delivered right to me. So. Um, what people will notice with stevia is that there is kind of a bitter aftertaste. So what we'll do, as I mentioned, is we'll combine a little bit of the liquid stevia with the swerve, and that kind of counteracts that cooling effect and that aftertaste. So if a recipe calls for one, you just don't like the flavor of it, try combining the two and see if that works for you. So um, we love using this when we make like heavy whipping creams, when we make um, a lot of the desserts like, like the peanut butter fluff and the stuff where it's kind of a, a softer, loose type dessert. So super good. So our next keto sweetener is Truvia. And we love Truvia because it already combines the erythritol that we find in Swerve with the stevia that we find in the liquid stevia drops. So it is more potent than um, the Swerve or regular sugar. So it's not a one-to-one -one conversion. There is a conversion chart on there, so make sure you do use that. Otherwise, the first time you make something, it's not gonna be so good. So um, it is a, again, a zero carb sweetener. Um, we use this a lot for like coffee. Um, some of the smaller batch snacks, um, maybe like cookies or muffins we might use it in. Um, but we really love this option. We get this from the grocery store as well, or you can buy bigger cans of it on Amazon. Um, so definitely check out the links for that one. But this is one that we always keep in our pantry and honestly, it's kind of Nick's go-to for his coffee. So the next one we're gonna talk about is this brand called Sucrin. So this is another one that um, uses erythritol. It's got a couple other things in there, um, but it is a one-to-one -one conversion as well. And it, um, this is the brown sugar version of it. I wanted to show one of these. Um, but they also have just regular, what we would consider white sugar, granulated sugar. Um, and these cook up great. So another option for you, again, available in your stores, um, health food section, or maybe a health food store, or on someplace like Amazon. The last one I want to talk about that is a true keto or low carb sweetener is this monk fruit. Um, and this one is becoming more and more popular. It's by this brand, Lacanto. And the monk fruit is actually a fruit from um, the Asian region and they've been using it for thousands of years out there. And this is a blend. So this has the monk fruit in it and the erythritol. And the great thing is it is a one-to-one -one conversion for this one as well. Um, monk fruit you can get, or the Lacanto sweetener, you can get um, direct from their website or they are in places like Amazon. Um, I haven't seen these as much in the grocery stores, but as keto becomes more and more popular, I'm sure we're going to. Okay, so our last two sweeteners are not keto. 
Um, they may not even be considered low carb depending on kind of what your goals are, but I wanna talk about them anyways because a lot of people have family or friends that maybe aren't on the keto bandwagon yet, but these are good kind of gateway sweeteners into the keto and low carb ones. So let's talk about them really quick. The first one I have here is another version of Truvia and notice that it says baking blend and 75% fewer calories. What that means is on the back, the ingredients are erythritol and then sugar, as in like the processed sugar. And then there's some stevia in here as well. It is not a one-to-one -one with regular sugar, um, which is why there's a conversion chart on the, uh, chart on the back. Um, but because there is sugar in there, it also means that it is not a zero carb sweetener. Um, there are four carbs per teaspoon using this Truvia. So they call this their baking blend. Um, it's a little bit uh, more filled with the sugar in there, um, but it's kind of a, a good gateway. If you want to start reducing your carbs, but you don't want your baking to be taste a lot different. Um, not that these are super different, but you might notice a sweetener change in here. Um, this is a good kind of first step in between if you want to ease into it or if you have family or kids that are not low carb or keto. The other option is, I kind of, it's hard to call it low carb. Um, it's organic coconut palm sugar. This became popular in when paleo came out because it is an organic sugar, it's palm sugar. Um, it kind of cooks like brown sugar. They, they do call it a brown sugar replacement on here. But when I started low carb and keto, I thought this was keto and I'm like, oh my cookies are so good. And I would use this and that and then I realized, ooh, there are eight carbs per two teaspoons. So four carbs per teaspoon in this as well. So not going to be the best option if you're low carb or keto. But again, if you have family who has not joined you on that keto bandwagon, this is better. It's going to be better than eating that processed white sugar. It's not going to be better for that glycemic index. It's not going to be better for things like that. So these are your two kind of low carb-ish gateway sweeteners um, to get you into the actual keto stuff. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Go ahead and check on the links below if you wanna look at more information on any of, the, any of these sweeteners um, so that you can make a decision on what the best sweetener is for your low carb and keto lifestyle.